If you've obtained your Salesforce Administrator Certification and are ready for the next step on the certification ladder, then the most obvious choice for most people would be the Advanced Administrator Certification. This certification builds upon the knowledge you already demonstrated in the admin exam, and it takes it a step further. It helps you to build upon your foundational administrator knowledge to further understand Salesforce. Let's take a closer look at what the Advanced Administrator exam involves. In my opinion, this is one of the most overlooked exams as it gives an extra layer to the administrative foundations of Salesforce. Personally, I would consider this exam to be suitable for any Salesforce professional, including admins, developers, consultants, and architects. Typically, a candidate should have at least one year of experience administrating a Salesforce org before taking this exam. This is because the advanced admin exam is based on different scenarios. Not only do you have to identify the right feature, you also have to understand if this is the best practice way of doing things. So, the exam is split up into seven categories with the heaviest categories weighing a whopping 20%. Let's start with one of those weightier sections, security and access. Within Salesforce, security is important to ensure users can only see the records they need with sensitive information exposed to the specific users that require it. This section of the exam focuses on the different mechanisms required to control record and field access. You'll need to be clued up on areas such as organization-wide defaults, the role hierarchy, profiles, permission sets, field level security, sharing rules, record types, and security with an experience cloud. You also need to understand enterprise territory management, particularly how this can be used to share records. An advanced admin is expected to compare custom profiles to permission sets and know what delegated administration can be used for. The key here is being able to choose the right solution for the given problem. Make sure you understand when profiles, permission sets, sharing rules and roles should be used and how they complement each other or not. For example, if a user has access to a record via sharing rules, but their profile doesn't allow access to the object, then they won't be able to see the record. Next up, we have objects and applications weighing in at 19%. This section of the exam guide talks about relationships within the Salesforce platform. You need to understand what a master detail relationship is and how the parent-child relationship works. Think about how to use roll-up fields, the implications of deleting records when they have a master detail relationship, and when and how to use junction objects. You also need to know what a lookup field is and the different configuration options for this type of field, particularly when deleting records or applying filters. The exam is likely to directly compare these features, expecting you to choose the right option. You could be asked about converting relationships from one type to another. Following on from that, we have auditing and monitoring at 10% of the exam. Within every Salesforce Administrator's Toolkit, there are various troubleshooting tools available, such as the debug log and the setup audit trail. For this section, you need to know what functionalities these tools provide and what tool to use based on a given scenario. Although the following tools are not explicitly mentioned in the exam guide, you should also consider field history tracking, email log files, feed tracking, and any other tools that Salesforce admins use to help troubleshoot, such as the login history. Cloud applications is our next section coming in at 11%. As you might have guessed, this section will test your knowledge of Sales Cloud and Service Cloud. For the Sales Cloud questions, you will need to understand how to set up products, as well as the related objects they need to be used in practice, such as price books and price book entries. You should also ensure you understand how product schedules are configured, as well as how to grant access to price books. The rest of this section is made up of quotes, forecasting, understanding the forecast hierarchy, forecast categories, including pipeline, best case, and quotas. In the Service Cloud section, you need to know how to set up and maintain a knowledge base. Think about the licenses required for this and how to control access with record types and data categories. The exam also covers entitlements and entitlement processes, so be sure to try these out 
using the relevant trailhead modules, as hands-on is the best way to get your head around it. As part of the service offering, you may be asked how agents can interact with customers and each other using features such as chat, case feed, the service console, experience cloud, and omnichannel. Data and analytics management makes up 13% of the exam and is our next section. Primarily, you'll be quizzed on improving your Salesforce data quality using features such as validation rules and duplicate detection to stop invalid or duplicate information from entering the system. It also covers enriching records, so make sure you know the difference between the data import wizard and data loader in terms of bringing in information from other systems. You'll also need to be aware of app exchange solutions for bringing in third party data. The exam may also touch on archiving records such as activities, tasks and events. Remember, you cannot report on archived records. This section will also go into the more advanced reporting features. You need to understand when to use custom report types, what reporting snapshots are and how to add charts or formulas into reports. You may be asked how to bucket values, use cross filters or dashboard filters. Don't forget, a joined report is essentially a collection of different reports together with a common grouping. A dynamic dashboard shows the user only the data they have access to. Moving on, we have environment management and deployment accounting for 7% of the exam. It might not sound like much, but it's still worth swatting up on this section. As you might expect, change sets form a big part of this section. You need to know how they work and how they can be used to move your metadata. It's important to know that change sets can't be used between unrelated orgs or developer orgs. All environments, including sandboxes and production, need to be linked to the same production environment. Don't forget to look into best practices when deploying changes, such as including dependencies, adding profiles and permission sets to include field level security, and ensuring your code has enough coverage. 75%. Additionally, you will also need to be aware of other options for moving metadata, such as Visual Studio Code. And finally, we have process automation, making up another huge 20% of the exam. Approval processes are one part of this section. Now remember, approval processes don't adhere to validation rules. For a record to go through the process, it needs to meet the entry criteria. The other part of this section focuses on process automation, including flow, formula fields, and when to use code instead of clicks. Be sure you know what each automation tool can do and consider completing the Process Automation Specialist Super Badge to familiarize yourself firsthand with these tools and how to use them. You can find the link to this in the video description below. When it comes to a study strategy, my advice would have to start with breaking down the official trailhead exam guide into manageable chunks and focusing on one area at a time. In my opinion, it's useful to complete any related trailhead modules, including hands-on exercises and recommended super badges. Remember that this exam is a step up from the administrator certification. Be prepared to answer questions about the more advanced admin functionalities and provide the best feature for the given scenario. Personally, I find it useful to make notes and then read these repeatedly as I study for each certification. Ensure you use official resources like Salesforce Help and Trailhead to put together your notes as part of your preparation. Now make sure you know how to answer questions such as, how do you give your users the ability to reset passwords for particular groups? Why can't you add a product to an opportunity? When should a profile be used versus a permission set? It really helped me to book in the exam and then work towards that deadline. It gave me some good momentum. For more study tips and exam strategy, check out our complete guide. You'll find the link in the video description below. And that's it. A whistle stop tour of the Salesforce Advanced Admin Exam. Be sure to take the necessary time to prepare and make sure you know your way around the features mentioned in this video. Relationships, reports and dashboards, sales, service and automation. Play to your strengths to work out the best study technique for you and use the resources at your disposal to get as much hands-on experience as you can before the big day. You've got this.